welcome to Destiny! I hope you're all doing really well, and I'm going to do a few reviews of some of the weapons I've acquired recently, including the Outbreak Prime, which is the exotic pulse rifle that you can do from a quest chain that I will briefly describe but you can find out how to do that in other YouTube videos on um, and you will need other people to help you complete the quest but I'll be reviewing that I will be reviewing the Chaos Dogma Scout Rifle that you can get as a drop in the new raid and also the Steel Medulla Pulse Rifle another drop in the new raid and I will also be reviewing the amazing Hawk Moon, which is an incredible exotic, but quite hard to learn how to master, or at least I feel it is. And also, I will go through some of the other little bits and pieces I have picked up on my travels going through the new Wrath of the Machine Hard Raid. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's have a look at Outbreak Prime. So, Outbreak Prime is, um, as you can see, a pulse rifle with some very unique abilities. It looks really beautiful, that is the one thing I have to say. It's very similar in the kind of idea of sleeper stimulant, with, uh, simulant, which is an exotic fusion rifle that you can, um, you will pick up the quest there from the gunsmith in the tower and um, again there are YouTube videos on how to get that and what Outbreak Prime has are the following unique aspects to it. The corruption spreads which are enemies that take repeated hits from this weapon spawn sea their knights that attack other enemies and fallen in particular take extra damage. You have the Outlaw perk, which is a precision kills with this weapon dramatically increased reload speed. And the main one is virulent, Virulence, or Virulence. Precision kills release a Siva Nanite swarm that attack other enemies. So there are two possible ways of releasing these, these uh, Nanite swarms. There are little seeker clusters that go around and attack other enemies or attack one primary target if you're attacking a boss and it is to do repeated body shots or precision shots so you get quite a good amount of those going the way that i've set up the rifle is that i have the accurized ballistics for more range and impact slightly more impact um, being a fusion rifle doesn't have that much impact to it anyway and a fitted stock to give it more stability and you can see when you fully um, have completely unlocked all the perks on the gun, it has this beautiful effect on it, which is like a kind of Siva Swarm effect and all the tubes lit up and everything like that. Now, how do you get this rifle? Well, in the raid, as you go along, there are things called monitors at certain points in the raid, and you will need um, a full fire team for the fourth monitor, where you have to basically unlock a huge device just as you go in before Axis, and you will need um, access to the internet because there are things that you need, uh, codes that you need to decipher, and it is quite convoluted. But if everybody in the raid team is doing it, as long as everybody stays, once you've finished Axis Phase 2, there is a section at the back of the room. Uh, which again is shown in other videos and you can all go and get the quest now once you've got the quest there are various stages and you will again need to have other players you need to remain in a team of one titan one warlock and one hunter to do all of the parts and you also need access again to the internet, internet again because there are various kind of decryption um, uh, puzzles along the way that need a calculator to sort out. But it is possible, and I'm sure there are plenty of YouTube videos already explaining 
the whole process if you get the quest. So the first stage is to get the quest, to do the monitors in either the normal or the hard raid, it doesn't matter which, and eventually you will get the rifle. So how does it play? Is it worth getting? Well, thankfully, the answer to that is yes, it's a very nice weapon to use. And unlike the horrific <laughs> um, raid weapon in the last raid, uh, which basically killed you, and I can't quite remember what it's called at the moment, I'll put a little link on it, um, you can use this freely and it's a nice primary exotic. So I'm going to show you it in action right now. In fact, I've got a great, great way to show you in action because we're going to have a public event. Hold on. And actually, because it's the uh, Festival of the Lost, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... Let me quickly look at the quest. I need to use the Tiger Mask. Yes, you've got lots of silly little quests like that. Now, it's going to drop my light level quite low, but it doesn't really matter. Still be uh, okay. able to cope with this. With the boss. So, if you're getting involved in the uh, festival, there are lots of little missions to do with that. Now, like that, to do. you can see, I don't know how well you can see on the video, I'm going to try and make it a bit more clear as we go along. But yes, you can clearly see the red clouds of mites coming out. And you hear that popping sound, just like in the Genesis chain, when I review the Genesis chain auto rifle, you get that beep sound, which signifies that the perk is active. It's got a very nice popping sound to it, and it is an extremely stable rifle. Uh, it doesn't flinch very much. Now, if you were to compare this to Red Death, which is another exotic uh, pulse rifle, seems to be working. Keep it's it much up. more stable. It has a bigger magazine, so you're not reloading as often. Of course, it doesn't have the perk that Red Death has, which is it keeps healing you. But in terms of the magazine size, it, it, it's substantially better. It has a magazine of 36. Almost there with this. This has been very fortunate to have this at the same time. Fantastic. Wait, 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 wait. I'll probably go on with a strike. There we go. Finish that lot off. We're almost there. Just hold out a little longer. So I think you're getting a good demonstration of the rifle in action. Um, Again, it, because it's a rifle, really, it feels Great happiest work. between medium to long range. And now that I have the ammo. Waved by compadres. So the ideal range is about medium to long, although, to be fair, it does handle quite well from medium to short range. And again, of course, my light level is very high now, but uh, see, it's, it's not bad. It does hold its own at a short range, so it's, it is a very versatile rifle. Um, I don't think that anybody who owns this rifle is actually going to find anything wrong with it. It's very, very nice. And it rewards precision as well, which uh, I like. But because it's got, it's so stable, 
Um, pulling off precision shots aren't actually that difficult to achieve. So that is the exotic um, Outbreak Prime, and I'm actually quite impressed with it. Um, so <laughs> I actually like it a lot. I will now switch over to the Chaos Dodna, which is the raid scout rifle. It looks like that with all the tubing. It's Omelon, and I love Omelon um, weapons. I think they do really well. We're done off to the next section, so I can give you a little demonstration. We'll look at its perks. Shaft is gallowing. And as I said in previous videos, you can get the gallowing at uh, the Eververse Trading Center. There, there's the rifle in action. Being a scout rifle, huge impact. Yeah, you don't, um, especially with these kind of enemies, you're not going to need many shots to take them down. Now let's have a look at the perks. So on this one we have Whirlwind's Curse, which is will be on all of them, but you can get different kind of rolls, as they call them, on uh, the weapon. So Whirlwind's Curse, this weapon does bonus damage against the Fallen, so all the raid weapons do that, of course, and bonus agility when this weapon is equipped, so it makes you more agile, that's very good. You have the linear compensator, the accurized ballistics, and the field choke, depending on your preference. I've kept it on linear compensator. Then you have triple tap, rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine. So that's useful. It keeps replenishing your uh, supply. You can have an extended mag if you wish, but I have a small bore, which increases the range and stability, although it does slow down the reload and reduces the, ma the magazine size. And then triple double, which is the main perk, when triple tap perk is triggered, an extra bullet is transferred from your reserves to the magazine. So this weapon is very good at re replenishing the amount of ammunition it has. And again, it, it's pretty stable. It is fairly slow uh, in terms of uh, its fire rate. So, but from medium to long range, we're going to try a bit of long-range shooting here. You can see that it's very, very powerful. And, yeah, you hear that that was the perk going again. By the way, the candy that's popping up, you'll see plus six and then these little strange... This is on the top right-hand side of the screen. That's because I have a candy bag. And I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, from the festival, and you can fill those up and get rewards from... Uh, the vendor in the the emblem vendor in the tower. Oh, we have another event, so that's good because I want to do these events for the um, for one of the quests for the festival. So that's great. So I'm going to do that, and also you'll be able to see the scout rifle in action. Fantastic. In fact, for this, what I will do, we've got trouble brewing. I will switch over to the pulse rifle. So that was the scout rifle. Case dogma. It is very good. I'll come back to talking about it, but because we're going to do an event, I'll switch over to steel medulla. Now, an awful lot of people really do like this, and this is a great sword. It's a legendary. It does extra damage to um, the fallen right again. I'll show you the perks after we've done this event, and it's full auto, which is fantastic. So we're doing a slew of events here. Just check I've got my tiger mask on. Yes, I have. Fantastic. See? Full auto scout rifle. Fantastic. And what I'll do is I'll briefly compare that to the full auto harrowed uh, full auto that I got from the Taken King raid. I'll show you the contrast of that while we're going through this event. I'll just show you this thing in action. There you 
go, very nice. More action on the way. Yeah, very good. It has a little bit of a kick to it, but it's pretty good. Again, medium, medium to long range is where you want to be. Um, about that kind of range, it's pretty good. Being full auto, though, you, you can feel kind of confident going from medium to short range with it because you have that capacity. It does fire quite well. But it isn't particularly a high fire rate. So you may find yourself coming unstuck if you're closing in with this uh, rifle and the crucible and things like that. You need to keep the distance. I'll go in with a strike. Got a nice sound for it. Again, it, being a pulse rifle doesn't have that much impact, so you're going to have problems anyway with shields. Got it. But once the shields are down, there you go. Very effective. Oh, almost. Well, we've done that. That's fantastic. Let's see if I can stay alive while all this disappears. And there you go. So that is... the Pulse Rifle Steel Medulla. And so we've got to give you a rundown on its stats we have obviously I described that it was full auto and it does extra damage against the fallen bonus agility again and we have CQP ballistic smart drift control I put it on smart drift control uh, just like bad juju it helps control the weapon high caliber rounds which are fantastic oversized rounds that stagger the targets and the big perk is to sign a four. So landing three bursts on a target causes the fourth burst to do extra damage. So again, rewarding accurate um, gameplay, more precise shots. Um, we can compare that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go back to the scout rifle. So what I was going to do is we can compare Chaos Dogma to the Harrow Duma Kelkus, which is a full auto rifle from the last hard raid, the one preceding Wrath the Machine, and you can see that it actually improves on impact and range, slight dip in rate of fire, but the impact is far better and the range is far better. Although the magazine on the Haroduma Kelkis is much higher, the Haroduma Kelkis has a very big kick to it and it's not so easy to use at longer ranges but the Chaos Dogma is. So that's the Chaos Dogma, the Steel Medulla, and Outbreak Prime. And now I'm going to bring out Hort Moon. So Hort Moon uh, is a kinetic damage weapon. You don't need to worry about that. You have these three uh, different right, uh, barrels in effect. Um, more predictable recoil, enhanced impact, short range, and more recoil. And you can see how they affect the stats. So the main perks are luck in the chamber. One random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. You can't tell which shot it's going to be. And you have a magazine of 13, but one of them is going to do much more damage. Holding aces, two more random bullets in the magazine deal considerable bonus damage. So basically, out of the 13 shots that you fire, three of them do huge amounts of damage. And if you're very accurate with this weapon, you can do huge amounts of weapon. And unlike the last word, um, huge amounts of damage, and unlike the last word, it rewards accurate game players. So that's why Hawk Moon has a very good reputation, especially in places like the Reputation. Those taking their time, look at that, and lining up their shots and of course with the improved range, 
so you don't have to close in. You can pick people off from quite a distance. It's a beautiful sounding weapon and it is changes the way you play. Very much changes the way you play. I don't know why this band isn't going there, but probably because I'm not accurate enough. There you go, you see? So it will punish you if you're not accurate, but if you're an accurate player, this is fantastic. Of course you can just go up and blind fire, but you're not going to do anywhere near as much damage. Uh, you want to be scoping and doing precision shots uh, most of the time. However, you can use the blind fire technique and you will still get those three extra bullets of damage. So. The reason that you will want to favor doing headshots and being more accurate, of course, is if you do a headshot with one of the bullets with extra damage, then you're going to be killing things in one shot. There you go, look at that. So that is the exquisite Hawk Moon in action. And I will just show you the skins they've put on it, the new uh, orna weapon ornaments for Hawk Moon and what they look like. And they are the Carrion, which looks like that. It looks a little bit damaged, like it's been rusted, like left in a drawer or something, not used, not really cared for. And Moon Glow, which just looks absolutely beautiful, very ornate. So there you go, that is Hawk Moon. Now, I'm going to switch back to my Outbreak Prime and quickly go over some of the raid items that I got. So, I have the raid, the hard raid helmet, as you can see, at the hard raid shoulders, and the hard. Uh, sorry, I have the normal raid helmet, the normal raid gauntlets, and the hard raid uh, chest armor. Now, there isn't really any difference in the look between the normal and the hard raid armor. The only difference being that on the hard raid armor, which is called spliced, you are able to add an ornament um, which changes its look to have this kind of siva glowing red effect. And we will be getting those ornaments um, from challenge modes in the hard raid. And at this point, I don't think they've released any of the challenge modes to do. So those will be weekly, as they were with King's Full Raid, and rotate um, amongst the bosses, I should think. Um, so that's the helmet, the shoulders, the chest. I also have the legs which look like that they actually look quite stunning so that's basically the full raid gear on and the actual um, class item the titan mark fantastic beautiful looking stuff and of course with if you can get the whole full um, raid gear uh, for the hard raid you can have that siva glowing effect all the way through your armor the other thing I've picked up is the other ghost shell. So I showed you in the um, second, last, second to last video the infection shell, uh, which looks like that's from the normal raid. I actually managed to pick up the one from the hard raid, and um, it's called the amalgam shell, and it looks like that. So actually it does look, for me, it looks better uh, than the other one. I think you would be happy with either, because <laughs> they're quite unique looking shells. And I think that almost, that basically brings me to the end of the video, other than one last thing, which is in the Festival of the Lost, if you watch this before the Festival of the Lost goes, if you want to know how to get this shader, which is called Super Black, then this is how you do it. You will receive a box of raisins from Eris in the tower and you'll be saying what do I do with these raisins now if you go to the speaker and spend 25 motes of light he will give you ascendant raisins once he's giving you the ascendant raisins take the ascendant ra raisins to Savala Savala will give you another item take that item to the speaker 
the speaker will give you another item. Take that item to the shipwright in the hangar. She will give you another item. And you go and take that item to Cade in the Vanguard next to Savala. And he will give you another item. And that is the last item. And the last item goes to Eris again. And she will give you a package. And in that package, you will have this shader plus a very cryptic piece of celery. The intrigue continues. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Catch you later.